Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the EVS-1000 Spectrum Modes. In this presentation, we'll show you how to make frequency domain measurements on RF, IF, and audio signals using Rodian Schwartz EVS-1000 series analyzers. This presentation assumes a basic familiarity with Rodian Schwartz EVS-1000 series analyzers and basic spectrum analyzer concepts. If you're unfamiliar with these topics, or if you'd like a review, you might want to watch the presentation Getting Started with EVS-1000 General Overview and or the presentation Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation before continuing with this presentation. The EVS-1000 supports both RF and IF as well as AF or Audio Frequency Spectrum Analysis. RF and IF are primarily used to look for noise and interference, while AF is most often used to check for distortion products such as harmonics. The functionality and configuration of these three modes are essentially identical, so we'll cover all of these modes together in this presentation. Software option K10 enables RF-IF spectrum analysis, and option K11 enables audio frequency analysis. RF or IF analysis can be used to display the input signal spectrum for frequencies between 70 MHz and 410 MHz. The main difference between RF and IF modes is that RF mode is used for frequency spans greater than 100 kHz, and IF mode is used for spans of less than 100 kHz. IF mode has the same functionality as RF mode, but permits more detailed analysis of signals closer to the center frequency. Audio frequency, or AF analysis, can be used on either the demodulated RF signal or on a baseband or LF input signal. Resolution bandwidth is user configurable, and different trace types such as clear write, average, and peak hold are available. The EVS also supports markers for both absolute as well as relative numerical measurements. To access spectrum modes on the EVS G1000, simply press the Mode Hard key on the front of the instrument and select RF Spectrum, IF Spectrum, or AF Spectrum. If operating the EVS over VNC, press M and use the down arrow to scroll through the list of available analysis modes. The first step in spectrum analysis is entering the center frequency and span. This is done on the EVSG by pressing the Channel Frequency Hard key or by pressing Q in VNC mode. The frequency range can also be entered as start and stop frequencies. Recall that the minimum span in RF spectrum mode is 100 kHz, so IF spectrum mode should be used if a narrower span is needed to see more detail on signals closer to the center frequency. The next step is setting the resolution bandwidth, which is done using the bandwidth hard key or the VNC shortcut E. As you should already know, a smaller resolution bandwidth decreases noise and improves signal detail, but also increases the time it takes to perform a sweep. We'll look at an example of this on the next slide. Resolution bandwidth can be automatically chosen by the EVS or manually configured by the user. Note that when manually configuring resolution bandwidth, bandwidth must be chosen from a set of predefined values. One difference between IF mode compared to RF mode is that IF mode has a set of smaller resolution bandwidths. Let's look visually at the effect of resolution bandwidth. With a narrow resolution bandwidth, we see more signal detail, but we have a longer sweep time. A wider resolution bandwidth shows less signal detail and has higher noise, but the sweep time is shorter. The correct resolution bandwidth setting usually needs to be chosen based on the measured signal, the application, and the environment. The other important settings are the reference level and range. These are accessed through the amplitude hard key or the VNC shortcut W. Reference level should be set as a value slightly above the highest expected signal amplitude, whereas range is the distance in dB between the top and the bottom of the display. Here, reference level is set to minus 50 dBm and range is 100 dB. So the bottom of the display corresponds to minus 150 dBm. Trace mode determines how traces are drawn and this can be configured by pressing the measure hard key or the VNC shortcut A. 
The chosen trace mode affects the displayed results. The EVS-1000 supports four different trace types. Clear Write is the default mode and simply clears and then rewrites the trace on every sweep. Average mode displays the average of n sweeps, where the average count n is defined by the user. This can be used to reduce noise or to smooth a trace as shown here. RMS is similar except that it computes the RMS, rather than the average value, over a number of sweeps. And max hold shows the highest measured value over n sweeps. Markers provide numerical values for trace points and are selected and configured using the marker hard key or by pressing I in VNC mode. Four markers are available and these can be either absolute values or delta, that is relative values. Markers can be placed and adjusted using the cursor keys and or the rotary knob. Special marker functions can also be used to automatically place markers, for example, setting a marker to the peak value on a trace. So in summary, EVS-1000 series analyzers support RF, IF, and AF spectrum analysis. RF and IF analysis require software option K10, and AF analysis requires option K11. Some of the primary applications of spectrum analysis are analyzing and measuring noise, interference, harmonics, etc. There are four basic steps in configuring any spectrum analysis mode. The first is setting the center frequency and span, or the start and stop frequencies. Next, an appropriate resolution bandwidth should be chosen. The reference level and range should be configured so that both the peak signal amplitude and the noise floor are visible on the display, and different trace modes can be selected if needed. In addition, markers can be placed on the trace to obtain precise numerical results. This concludes our presentation, getting started with the EVS-1000 Spectrum Modes. If you'd like to learn more about the EVS-1000 or other avionics-related topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.